Uh, so uh, we're Ancestry GP. So what's our, what's our problem? So family history data is very sparse and inaccurate and important. Family history plays a crucial role in assessing disease risk and its significance is growing with the advancements in genomics. What are we trying to achieve? So we're trying to connect and visualize individuals in a family tree structure to assess their risk of inheritable diseases. And who is this for? So this is for GPs and patients. So this is our main flow chart. So first we need to gain consent from the patient. Then we need to establish the relationships between individuals within a family. Then we need to generate the family tree that I was talking about. And then the GP would be able to assess the risk of the individual based on if they have close proximity of people in their family with disease. All right, we're gonna show you a demo of what we had in mind. Okay, so that's the patient data. It's not NHL using. So it's gonna generate a family tree for the data, or like multiple trees. So it's gonna be a simple family tree. So the bottom's gonna be um, you know, younger generation, the top is gonna be the older generation. And you know, as you go up, parents, grandparents, etc. It can also calculate hereditary risk, or well, not calculate, but more we'll give insight into it. So you can select the disease, the patient, it's going to well, like find, or it's gonna generate like a tree for that specific patient. And it's gonna you know, find like all of the you know, family members you have with those diseases, and it's gonna use that in order to, I guess, come to a verdict or more suggestion. So that's our project. And in this case, this person has a disease, so yeah. I guess they're going to get treatment. Okay. So now we're going to see how the, um, you can see a, um, a GP system and you've got a list of patients there um, with the details. Um, you can also see related family members there. So um, if we click on related people, this will take you through. So you can see the, the person's um, graph showing their risk of hereditary diseases. And this changes when, when you switch to their family member. And uh, um, yeah, we'll just demonstrate um, the go between there. All right, so uh, ethical issues. Uh, consent protection are key. Um, patients will be fully informed when registering um, with this uh, service and asked to sign a consent form to share the data close family members. The slide shows what we've learned and uh, I'm hoping you can read the slides, the, the points. I'd particularly like to emphasize the last point. Uh, we are not uh, going to be developing family trees for every single in individual in the population straight off. What we're going to do Focus on individuals, build them individuals, so we can ensure high quality information for each person's pedigree. That's it. People can have a read on there about what they learned. Any questions? Again, another quick one. Uh, if you're going to delve into that level of detail around individual family members, are you going to require the consent of all the patient themselves? I think that's just what you were saying, John. Um, yes, so I think that uh, what we were thinking was that um, if, if a, a member of their family gave permission for their uh, information to be used, it wouldn't be the case of, um, like, for example, if we are related, I would require um, the consent of you specifically to have my data, but that you would be able to have the data of um, uh, first and second generation, so people would be able to view it if they were within that circle. Um, and then we were also thinking that um, there's possibility that you might want to uh, blacklist certain people from being able to view your data that are within your family and then that's something that we um, thought might, you might be able to talk to your GP and say I don't really want my data to be given to this person, please can you revoke it? Perhaps I can very quickly add that that's what we're doing. We have a network of people who all know each other and they can all agree and give their informed consent so there then aren't any problems, we hope, with sharing data. <laughs> any other questions? Um, how does the health service, or 
how would you validate that the data is accurate and true? Some people don't know that they're adopted. They might assume that they're related to their family and they're not. It might be enough to surprise later. So if a person doesn't know their family history, how do you work around that? Or they, how do you or they have it that, wrong? Yeah, how do you validate that, cure, that they're actually related the way they're saying they are? <laughs> okay, so, so one of the things that we thought we could use was the, um, the, uh, the source of birth certificates and, and death certificates, which are held by the government. Um, and that's a way of being able to validate who exactly your parents were, which is also sometimes missing. A uh, follow-up question, would you also require DNA information? Um, so for this system, no. Just to say the question was about the use of DNA to establish family relationships. Um, so for, for this process, no, because we would be doing it on the basis of um, if, if a family member is doing it, is specifying that they are, this, this is their relation. Um, so, this, so even if there was a mistake, um, I think that it wouldn't matter so much because this is more as for the GP to prompt investigation rather than to um, to say that this person is related, definitely this person is related, therefore definitely this person has a family risk. I think also what we were thinking was in the future with um, the rise of genomics and that everybody, maybe in the, everybody in the future might have a genetic test. And so we're able to, we would be able to establish a relationship between people definitively automatically create this family tree essentially.